many people have asked this question as to how much money a data scientist makes well it's a million dollar question we cannot have a clear cut answer to this question so we need to understand the different nuances of it. we'll try to understand if you go to indeed's website you can straight away you know, do the search and you can find that in the united states the average salary of a data scientist is 130000 dollar okay that's the average salary or the median salary in 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 principle but it can vary from you know 45000 uh, which is the lower end to uh, you know um, close to 300000 okay and it in fact can go up or go down because many people haven't actually reported the, their salary in uh, uh, in this particular website but this can well be uh, you know taken as one of the reference for uh, understanding how much uh, money or how much salary a data scientist actually all right so we'll try to understand uh, what uh, contribute towards uh, what affects someone's salary who is working as a data scientist okay so those who are new to this field those who are hearing this for first time well a data scientist is someone who analyzes data who makes predictions who automates tasks uh, and these people have skills uh, in areas such as statistical analysis machine learning deep learning uh, structural query language and uh, uh, programming language such as python and r okay so let's try to understand the history of data science well it's not long ago that data science has been very popular uh, in in our day-to-day -day life uh, data science has been there for a very long time in fact it's been over 100 years that people have been using uh, statistical techniques to do prediction to automate tasks for a number of years but it was always a niche it's only in the last few years uh, probably even in less than 10 years that people have been using data science in almost everything that we do uh, in, in in the current world. And that's because of uh, many reasons, because of the cheap way of getting data, the easy way of getting data, the cheap computing power. So data science wasn't that popular till 2012. It's only after 2012 it has picked up quite, you can see this steep increase in the popularity of data science. So that's a Google trend and you, know, you can actually go to Google Trend and see how data science has actually. Uh, so this is just a graph from Google Trend. You can also do the same thing with the data scientist job. Okay, uh, and the Google Trend says that it's only after 2012 that the popularity of, of data scientist as a job has actually, uh, you know, increased manifold in demand. And the most searched topic in uh, related to data science is that the salary. So how much money or what is the salary of a data scientist okay there is no uh, you know there is no clear-cut answer there is no straightforward answer there are many things that needs to be understood before we uh, actually uh, can get to know how much money one can make by working as a data scientist all right the salary of a data scientist or salary in data science uh, will normally depend on three important things the domain you're working uh, in the skills that you're having and the experience that you're having well, in most jobs, these are the three important things that, uh, you know, decides what the money or what the salary you will be getting, right? Same applies to data science as well. Let's try to understand, you know, how salary uh, varies in different domains uh, with, with skills and with different uh, experience. Alright, the first let's understand how skill, different skill matters in deciding what the salary one is earning uh, in his day-to-day -day job as a data scientist. So the first one, the category one, I would say the top category would be someone with uh, very strong or is very strong in machine learning or deep learning research skills. You know, for example, a scientist in, in Google Brain team. Okay, so he would be uh, earning a lot of money, right? In upward of 200,000k, right? Somebody working in Google Brain team will be making in excess of, you know, 200,000 dollar. Okay, um, and there are also people who work in investment bank, hedge funds, and so on. Who are very good with applied maths and statistics and also reasonably good with machine learning who are known as quantitative analysts of quants in investment banks they also earn quite a lot of money both as a base salary as well as their bonus uh, there are also people who uh, know a lot of things about business they specialize in business rather than in, in more technical things but they do understand statistics and machine learning to a great extent so these are people who work in top consulting firms such as McKinsey or Bain or something Firms like that, they all they also make a, a lot of money. So these three categories, uh, I would rate, I would categorize them as category one of the, or rather top skills of people who have, uh, you know, probably the highest type of data science skills and uh, probably the most amount of money. Skills.
skill number two or category two people who do not specialize uh, in a particular quantitative techniques but they actually are very good in implementing these techniques so people who are really good in python programming or r programming along with uh, sql and they are, these are people who are also uh, very familiar with uh, data visualization you know, tools like uh, tableau or any of these data visualization so these are people who are very very strong in implementing algorithms developed by a data scientist. So they are people who are not typically uh, called as data scientists but they do work along with data scientists or they work with, uh, in the field of data science, data science and they make uh, a lot of money as well. So these people cannot can be categorized, these skills can be categorized in category 2. In category 3 I would argue that people who know a bit of both, okay? so people who have intermediate skills in machine learning, deep learning and programming. Okay, so these are the people who actually don't develop models or build models to implement or automate. They uh, actually implement the model by themselves by working as a business analyst or writing a computer code. Sometimes they do validation of the models and they also do documentation of the models. So they fall uh, into somewhere down the uh, salary category because they actually don't do the high uh, end quantitative work. But they rather validate the work or implement the work in production. Okay, so we can also categorize uh, the salary grade with respect to domain. Okay, so category one will have um, so in, in finance, uh, one working with uh, quantitative research haze funds such as you know a Tower Research or Two Sigma, or working as a quant with investment banks such as Morgan Stanley or Goldman Sachs will be earning a lot more than somebody working in a retail bank. Okay. Uh, similarly, if you are working uh, with Google, Apple, Uber or Microsoft, the top technology companies will be earning a lot of money. Uh, similarly, with consulting, if you are working with McKinsey, you are paying a lot of money. So, uh, not all sectors pay uh, similarly. You know, Finance, technology and consulting pay, pay way more than in, let's say retail um, or aviation or let's say entertainment industry, media industry and so on. So, if you are working as a data scientist in finance uh, or in, in uh, top technology firms or with top consulting firms, then you are likely to be a leader. So, in category two, I would include uh, if you are working with you know the smaller uh, finance firm, fintech firms, with, with combination of technology and finance, or working with retail banks, you will be uh, earning slightly less than what uh, you will be earning in an investment bank, top tier investment banks, or or a hedge fund. If you are working with large manufacturing companies, the traditional companies like GE. Toyota and Tata, they would also be paying you good, but not as much as what Microsoft would be paying to pay. Retail firms like Walmart, Tesco, they would also be able to pay you a lot, but not as much as what Amazon, which is, is more of a tech company, would, uh, uh, would pay. Consulting firms like, such as Ernst & Young, PwC, Accenture would also pay you a good amount of money, but they won't be able to pay you uh, as much as what uh, somebody in McKinsey would Experience is important to understand in this field. I have already said this is a very new field, pretty uh, new compared to probably many other fields, right? Um, so, and it's very fast changing as well, okay? So, experience plays a big role, but we have to understand how uh, how does, you know, uh, how does it matter in deciding your salary? Well, if you actually plot your salary, you make it in y-axis and let's say experience uh, in x-axis, your salary would obviously increase with experience. But it saturates at one point and in fact it goes down. Okay, not with everybody though, but with a large section of people, you will you will see that the salary will saturate at one point and then it won't increase much. Then uh, it probably is going to go down with with time because the field is so new that there is always a demand for new talent in this field. Pretty much like many other tech talent like software engineering or, uh, or uh, such skills, where you know. You always need people with high, a lot of energy, people who are really good with new things, okay? And people who have tons of experience with old things, experience don't quite matter much up to one level. So uh, the most sought after people are people with four to eight years of experience, okay? And this could be even you know slightly here and there. It could be let's say three to ten years. Uh, so in that range, people with you know some experience with uh, data science, they're quite in demand because they are pretty new to the field. At the same time, they have some experience who can you know, get things done. 
people who have you know less than four years, four years of experience, people who have over eight to ten years of experience. You know, so these two category of people are in slightly less demand compared to the category one, where people have just you know, experience between four to eight years. And in category three, these are people who have no experience, or people who have over fifteen to seventeen years of experience. So people who have no experience, they always have problem to you know get jobs, right? In any field, not just in data science, but in any field. But the good, the the interesting thing about data science is that once you are too experienced, right? You have like over 15 years of experience. You should have uh, a very either a very strong skill that somebody cannot replace you, or you are so valuable to, to the company in doing other work, not just you know uh, developing technology. It's also about you know um, helping the management, getting more business, uh, such skills, uh, marketing, sales skills. Unless you have those skills, somebody with over 15 years of experience uh, in this area and given the fact that this is a new area people with over 15 years experience will mostly have irrelevant experience right because the area the field itself is so new that you know many of them will be having you know experience in software development or in uh, you know in marketing or in software testing or, or doing support activities so those experience don't actually quite uh, matter much when it comes to you know um, building a good data science team so that could also cause a dip in a salary okay another often uh, important question asked is uh, the difference between somebody doing a data science job and doing freelancing as a data scientist okay uh, as with any jobs not just with a data science job um, the salary is always steady so you get a steady salary and but the earning is always limited right uh, you cannot earn beyond a point. Of course, in few areas, like if you're working in um, consulting firms or investment banks or hedge fund, the bonus is quite high. It, it all depends on how you perform. And if you can use uh, your data science skills to, let's say, uh, bring in more business or rather, you know, make a lot of profit through investments, then you can, you know, get a good bonus out of that. And that will increase your sal uh, money or salary, overall salary to a large extent but in most data science jobs your salary will be limited if you're doing a job but the salary is always steady which is also a good thing so for that you need to get a degree in quantitative fields such as computer science math engineering or economics or statistics you need a formal degree to get into a job right but for freelancing you do not need any degree okay but the earning can be quite high if you really are good but it's not steady okay uh, it it could vary uh, over a time uh, right sometimes it's demanding right now so you could be earning a lot of money now but you know you never know what is going to happen to this field five years down the line uh, it is expected it's going to do well but you know there is no guarantee of anything so uh, but the good thing is that you don't need a degree to start with so no requirement of degree you do not need to go to ivy leaks to you know, be, become a freelancer uh, you need you know a strong quantitative and programming skills to be able to convince your client that you can work for them so you can work in many areas such as consulting, you can work as a consultant, you can provide advisory services to companies, startups especially, and you can make a lot of money from there. You can teach people how to you know, use data science uh, techniques in their day-to-day -day, uh, work and life, and there also you can make money. Okay, some tips to, let's say, improve your salary or increase your salary if you, are, uh, if you think that you want to. Okay, so the first thing is that learn the theory very well. Most data scientists make this mistake. They're pretty good at uh, you know knowing the applications of data science techniques, but they don't understand the difference between uh, you know even the simple concepts. Like if you do not know what a linear model is and what is a nonlinear model is, you could be in trouble sometimes. Okay, if you do not understand the uh, theory behind regularization or the theory behind you know let's say ensemble modeling okay uh, you probably would be able to do your job correctly but people who know their theory very well are actually uh, hired in a research positions okay people who work in google brain okay uh, or you know in top uh, tech companies you know there in the interview you will be asked tons of theory not just how to uh, you know apply a random forest or how to build a neural network they will also be uh, asked questions related to the underlying theory okay the abstract concepts behind uh, the techniques learn the latest development happening in this field and the best way to you know know the latest development is to uh, read research paper but not everybody can read research paper there's so much 
of research paper out there but uh, many a times we do not have access to those research papers from the universities from the academicians and sometimes it's too, too technical to read so the best way to get yourself acquainted or get yourself used to what's happening um, uh, in this field is to read the blogs developed uh, written by uh, many researchers working in uh, top technology companies so google research has a blog uber has its own research blog facebook has its four facebook data science um, blogs open ai has its own blog you can also follow top you know top people in machine learning or in, in other data science field to actually tweet interesting articles and research paper on twitter so you can follow them Third thing is to find a niche, okay? People who earn a lot of money, uh, they know everything about a small area, the specialized, rather than, you know, being a generalist, if you, are, if, you, if you become a specialist in a particular area, whether it's a particular domain or particular tool, technique or particular tool, you will earn a lot of money. So if you, if you say that I'm a computer vision um, specialist, you should know everything about computer vision, okay? Um, so if you say I'm, I'm a quantitative analyst for finance, you should know everything about quantitative investing, right? So if you cannot, you cannot expect a lot of salary if you know, you know, a bit of everything, you know, that's not going to work uh, in, in long run. So always find a niche and, and specialize in one area and be really good at it. You can also socialize uh, and that actually helps a lot, especially getting better opportunity, which will enhance somebody's uh, you know, salary or earning potential. Okay, you can write blog posts, share it with people, you know. Uh, many people will read your blogs and you know they could actually contact you for your service you could maintain a github uh, account there you can post your code whatever side projects that you're working on just put the code on the on your account and that will be noticed by many people and people will contact you for your service uh, you could you know patent your work if that is good enough publish your work if it is polished enough and you can attend conferences in order to be able to you know know many other people who are working in the field and that could bring an interesting opportunity. So that's about how much money you can make uh, by working as a data scientist.